Welcome to our worship service here at Bogart United Methodist Church in Bogart, Georgia. I am Mickey Chastain. I'm the pastor at Bogart. We are privileged, uh, just blessed that you would join with us for our virtual worship service today. We are still uh, this Sunday. We, we believe and hope this is the last Sunday that we are doing a virtual only worship service, uh, trusting and praying that next Sunday we will be gathering in person again in the sanctuary at the church as well as offering the live stream service to that um, worship service for those who will continue to join with us from their homes. But uh, today we are still navigating this virus uh, and so appreciate so much your continued prayers, uh, your support for our community and that we are connecting with you all this morning in this way. Um, though we are not gathered in person today, we do have a lot of things that are happening in our community. Um, the first, and I know this does not apply, some folks in our congregation and who are connecting here will not care about this, but I have to mention this has been a pretty big deal in our community here in Bogart and in the Athens area. We are celebrating uh, a national championship for uh, our Bulldogs here at the University of Georgia. Um, and this has happened in the same season um, that just a few weeks ago, uh, the Braves right down the road won the, the um, World Series. Um, so it's been quite a season and, and we're all trying to just really accept this and not think that something strange <laughs> is going on. So it's been, it's been a quite a quite a time of celebration around here in these last several days. Uh, we are also in this time continuing to navigate COVID. Uh, my, I, of course, I tested a little over a week ago. I tested positive. Um, I took another test this past Tuesday. It was also positive, um, and I've taken another test on Friday. And I'm still waiting the results of my Friday test. And so, uh, but we know that there are uh, a couple of folks in our congregation who are battling COVID uh, right now, and really, I'm um, continuing just to to rest and to recover. Um, and not only in our congregation, but family members, uh, community members, so many folks. This wave has really hit a lot of folks. Um, so we just, again, thank you for your prayers. Um, thank you for your support. And again, trusting that next Sunday, uh, we'll be kind of moving out of this wave and uh, able to gather again safely in person and through our live stream. Um, we also tomorrow are celebrating our Martin Luther King holiday. Um, this is a really precious time of the year for our family. You know, we, we spent a lot of years, about 10 years in Europe. Uh, our two youngest kids were born in Europe. Um, and so when we move back to this area, right, what a privilege it is um, to have a home right here 
in this this part of the world and near Atlanta and in this space and one of the first things that we did when we moved back we wanted to to teach our kids about the the local history and about the significant figures and those folks who have played such an important role in really um, just forming this community and forming our worldview and so one of the first places we went was to the King Center of course we uh, we went to Ebenezer Baptist over there we went to the birthplace of Dr. King and where he grew up um, that was a very special time for our family and then just last week we were over in New Mexico as we were driving back home from New Mexico we stopped over in Memphis um, and there we took the kids to go visit the Lorraine Hotel um, the site where Dr. King's life was taken um, when he was assassinated at that location uh, so many years ago and so uh, so this is just a really a sacred time is a special time for remembering and celebrating not only his life and his legacy but um, our continued call right to serve um, to seek justice to remember that we are in Christ one body um, and so it is a really special special time and sacred privilege uh, this weekend to remember Dr. King and his life um, and then also on January the 21st we uh, had the opportunity as our church to go and to serve at the Axe Food Pantry and Community um, Clothing Closet just over here in Bogart, Georgia from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the 21st. Anyone who's available to come out and serve for a while, um, we are welcome to come out and to do that. So let us open our service now with a word of prayer. Merciful Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God, for the gift of life this morning. Father, we know that in some places this morning there is a lot of winter weather. There are a lot of um, obstacles and, and places that are dangerous, places that are making it difficult for us to leave our homes. Um, so I do pray, Holy Spirit, that even now in this hour, your covering and your protection will come in our congregation, our families, and our communities. Um, and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just come into our homes as we gather this morning for worship wherever we are gathered and whatever space let it be in this time a sanctuary let it be a sacred space where we can rest in your spirit hear from you learn of your word trust in you and surrender again to the thing that you are doing father god for you are holy and your ways are good bless and praise you father let all we do in this time honor you for you are most worthy. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we begin our service um, in light of the holiday, the MLK holiday this weekend. We're going to begin this morning by viewing a, a brief video which was put together by the United Methodist Church. And it reminds us that even in the midst of, of all of the trials, all of the changes which we are experiencing through this season, still we are one church. You know, even this morning, we, well, though we cannot gather in one place, we are one church and we are called to be the church, right? And to be connected, to be rooted in Christ, to be generous, world-changing, missional, justice-seeking, a people who embrace and celebrate our diversity, and a people who are always surrendering and waiting again upon the Holy Spirit to come, to transform us, and to make us more into His church. All right, and so I invite you to join me now as we um, enter into a time of reflection, as we enter into our time of worship together this morning.
enter into a time of prayer uh, together. I know this is a little different when we are worshiping virtually only, but um, but it's really a, pl- a privilege and a pleasure, though we are not gathered in one space, still we are able by the Holy Spirit to enter together into the throne room of God and to lift up with one voice our community, the congregation, our families, and it is really, a, like I say, it's a privilege and is a gift that we can do this by the power of the Holy Spirit moving in our lives and in the spaces where we are worshiping this morning. Uh, as we enter into prayer, since we are gathering virtually, we will use this time as well to offer to God the tithes and the offerings which have come into um, our church. We receive those tithes and offerings. I, I, I cannot thank you all enough just to continue um, to have so much Um, gratitude that through this difficult season especially um, you have been so faithful to support this congregation and this community with your tithes and offerings even through these difficult seasons um, the Lord has been so faithful and every need has been met and this is this is the faithfulness of our God displayed through um, you all and your generosity so As we enter into a time of prayer at this time, uh, we will remember and lift up, receive and lift up our tithes and offerings. We will also lift up the needs of our community together and just spend some time in prayer together. At the close of our prayer, we will will share in the Lord's Prayer together, and that will be on your screen at that time uh, so that we can do that together. So let us now enter into a time of prayer. Merciful Father, this morning, um, Lord, we... uh, We just enter together into your presence, into the church, into the sanctuary, Father, with such gratitude. Though we are unable to enter physically into the building, which we call the sanctuary at the church, Father, even where we sit, even in the spaces in our living rooms and our kitchens in this very hour, by your Holy Spirit, Father, in this space, we are in sanctuary in your presence, a place of renewal, and a place where we can just rest in your presence, in your grace, in your mercies, Lord our God. So we just thank you for this time and this space this morning. At this time, we want to uh, receive and thank you, Lord God, for the tithes and the offerings that have come into this congregation so faithfully. These have been some difficult seasons. There have been some difficult weeks, Father God, and you know the needs that we have in this congregation you know the places where you are continuing to call us to go forth and to serve and to give and to proclaim the truth of your gospel jesus christ and so lord god we give these tithes and these offerings back to you now in the name of christ jesus we pray father that you will bless these things they will be multiplied in your presence and that we will be obedient to use these tithes and these offerings, these resources, and the resources of people's time, and the resources of the spaces which you have blessed this congregation with, and that these things we will give to you and use to the glory of your name in accordance with your will, Father, and not ours. This morning, Holy Father, we also lift up to you so many in our community who are continuing to struggle with illness, battling COVID, In the name of Christ Jesus, come Holy Spirit, I pray you will minister in our bodies. Bring us healing, bring us relief from the pain for those who are awaiting procedures and doctor's appointments. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. I pray you will bless also the medical community right now. Those in our community who are serving in hospitals and pharmacies, doctor's offices. In the name of your son, Christ Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God. You are our provider, God. You are a cover, the shield about us, Lord our God. So that is our prayer for those who are serving in the hospitals, in the medical community, especially in this season, Father, that you would cover and protect each one of them and that they would have renewal and and restoration even in your presence, even in this very hour, in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up to you the places in our communities where in this season people are I'm struggling with hunger, where people have um, financial needs for housing and for clothing, for basic needs for themselves and their families. In the name of Christ Jesus, Holy Spirit, we pray you will continue to come and to move in these spaces and to move even through our congregation, Lord God, that your children will see these needs met and they will look and they will know that the Lord our God has done this. 
that the provision has come from your holy hands, Father, that you will be glorified. And finally, this morning, we lift up to you those who are grieving. This has been a season of so much loss, so much change. We know that even in, in good change, even when good new things come into our lives, even in those times, it means that something else is going away. There has been so much change, so much loss in these days and months. So I just do pray that you will continue, Holy Spirit, to minister in our lives and our families and our hearts in these places of loss and grief, ministering and speaking peace and comfort, restoration in those places where we just don't have the words. And finally, this morning, I ask that you will come, Holy Spirit, in this time of worship, in this time of prayer, wherever we are, that you will minister as we pray together, that precious prayer which your son taught his disciples to pray as we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Finally, at this time, um, I think it's a a special privilege uh, to be able to share together um, in the Apostles' Creed, the, the creed that reminds us, especially in a season with so much turmoil and so many things that are happening, it's good to come together and to remember as the body what are our central, our core beliefs as the church. And so if you will at this time, remember with me uh, the Apostles' Creed as it is on your screen. So I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
of scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians. I am in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 and 11. So hear now the word of God. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another interpretation of tongues. And all of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. So this is the Word of God for the people of God. And we give thanks this morning to God for His Word. So what a wonderful, um, encouraging passage of Scripture that we have from Paul this morning and his letter to the church in Corinth. Uh, today, we'll spend the next couple of Sundays um, looking at some of the things that Paul said to the church in Corinth, um, specifically about gifting and service in the church, right? Serving in the church with the gifts that we are granted by the Holy Spirit, right? When we enter into the life of the church, then we should expect to see spiritual gifting manifested, right, or, or demonstrated throughout the church in each of our lives all right and paul tells the church that these gifts are granted to us by the holy spirit for the common good all right and that phrase common good there right this means that these gifts are given to each of us in the church to enable us to come together the common body to bear together towards one common purpose or benefit and we notice that in this passage, draw, Paul draws uh, this really clear contrast here, right? He begins by saying, like before, he says, back, back when you were still pagans, right? He says, you were constantly being led astray to idols, right? He says that when, when the people lived as pagans, they were seduced, and they were blinded, and they were deceived, and they were carried away in all directions to all sorts of idols, Right? And then Paul contrasts that image of being seduced or, or carried away in all different directions with this other image of living life as the church and submission to the Holy Spirit in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And as we look at this, this first point here, like right off the bat, we see that Paul says this. He says, no one who is surrendered to the Holy Spirit will be able to curse Christ Jesus. Right? And anyone, he says, who confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, they are doing so by the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Right? So Paul is making it clear here, right from the beginning. When we're thinking about spiritual giftings and operating in our gifting toward the common good in the church, then what we're talking about here is lordship. Right? To whom or to what... Am I submitting in my life as Lord? 
right? Who or, or what is truly like influencing and dictating my behavior and my decisions, right? Who or what is forming my character, forming my worldview, right? Because that's, that's Lord. That thing is Lord in my life. And this is a huge question, right? This is really everything, especially as we're thinking about being the church and walking in the giftings that we are given. Um, and so the question here, as we're getting into this, essentially this is a question about motive, right? Whose purpose are we working towards in the church today, right? Are we using these gifts to, to come together as one, to bear together as one body, submitting together to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and using our gifts and service for the common good, right? Seeing people come to know the love of Jesus Christ and to be saved, right? Or are we in the church being influenced by other motives, right? Maybe, maybe using our gifts to like see our own like preferences or our own comfort kind of met in the church, right? Maybe even to see some of that glory and that praise that goes to God, maybe to see a little bit of that come back to us, right? To have folks like affirm us and tell us, you know, how, how wonderful we are and, and how talented we are and give us the praise and the glory, right? That really belongs to God. Like these are all motivating factors. And so the question this morning is we're thinking about the giftings that we have and walking in those giftings as the church. What is the underlying motive to whom or what are we submitting as Lord? Like some years ago, I had a mentor. And I've been blessed with, with a number of amazing mentors in my life. Um, but I remember this lady, uh, she would describe the Lordship of Jesus Christ like this. She said that, you know, when we um, first like confess Jesus Christ as Lord, we confess him with our mouths. When we are baptized with water, all right, we talked about this some last week. She said this can be understood as the point in a person's life when they accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Like, I, I'm in need of a Savior. He has saved me. She said, but when a person actually receives the Holy Spirit, right, when that person surrenders to the presence of the Holy Spirit to come into their lives and to transform them, she said, this is the point at which we can understand that this person is accepting Jesus not only as Savior, but they're also now accepting him as Lord. Right? These are two different things, right? And if we truly desire to walk as the church is intended to walk, right? Walking in spiritual giftings, seeing the transformation of our community in Christ Jesus, then we must be ready to accept Jesus Christ, right? Not only as our Savior, and that's crucial, but also as our Lord, right? This is the transforming work of the Holy Spirit that must be happening in our lives if we can expect to truly be the church for other people. Right? And so the authorities of this world, right, as the noises, the deceptions, the seductions, the distractions of this world, right, as we surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ as Lord, let the Holy Spirit come into our lives, then these worldly things, they don't so easily seduce us or de deceive us any longer, right? Their authority in our lives, it begins to break. Right? We're no longer carried away by all of these different things that come up and these deceptions and these teachings and all of these things that come our way. But we're surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Right? And, and by so doing, we're set free. Right? And we're also transformed and become the church. Right? This is what happens with the Holy Spirit, right? And then Paul, he continues with this contrast. He says, you know, when you were pagans, you were, you were seduced and you were carried away by every sort of idol, you know, and teaching. But as the church, he says that though we are given different gifts, right? Though we are called to serve in different ways in different places, he says, in everything we do by God's grace, we stay planted to the one God, to one Spirit, one Lord Jesus Christ. By God's grace, we're, we're less like a leaf, 
right? That's just kind of flittering and flowing here and there, and it's not anchored anywhere, right? And, and, and by God's grace, when we surrender to him, we become more like a, a, like a branch on a vine, right? Now the storms still come. Right, we know this. It's, it's we're surrendered to the Lordship of Christ Jesus, right? We get connected to Him, even though when the storms come, and even though we may get blown around by the storms, and we may get beaten up a little bit by the storms, still we remain firmly like, connected and grounded in the vine. We're grounded there. We're not carried off over here. We're not carried off over there, but we are consistent We remain grounded in the vine, trusting in him as our nourishment, as our covering, as our protector, growing and moving together. One body, right, for the common good. And this sort of surrender to Jesus Christ, this, this means that we're learning to walk in our gifting and our service as the church. And in order to do that, then we must be consistently praying This incredible prayer of surrender, right? This prayer of Christ Jesus when he said, not my will, Lord, but yours be done, right? Not my wisdom, not not my understanding, not, not my purpose, not my plans, but yours, Lord. And this is a continual, consistent prayer that we must pray, and this can be hard, right? Because very often my ideas my desires, my plans, right, about even how I should go out and share the gospel. Very often, my plans and ideas are not in agreement with his for a number of reasons. First of all, he sees and understands everything, and I don't, right? He sees and understands things that I cannot even comprehend, right? But not only that, I'm not good, (laughs) I am not good in the way that God is good. I am good as I'm covered by the blood of Christ Jesus. And by God's grace, he's transforming me, right? He's sanctifying me. But I'm still a work in process, right? So my plans and my ideas about the ways that I I should be walking in my giftings and, and going out and serving, like my plans and ideas, they are still marked by my own ambition. Right? My, my plans are marked by my idolatry and my selfishness and my desire to have people look at me. Right? Not look at God. I like them to look at me. Right? There's still a part of me that likes to serve and goes out and does these acts of service as a way not only to share the love of Jesus, but also to get people to kind of look at me and, and praise me and affirm me, right? Tell me, like, how amazing I am, right? That gives us a little rush, doesn't it? Right? But God is perfectly good, right? He's perfectly holy and just, and he loves with perfect love, right? And so we, in order for me and for us as the church being transformed, But in order for us still to walk out his perfectly good, holy will, then we must learn to wait for, to receive, to discern, to surrender to his Holy Spirit. He must be Lord. Right now, some of you have heard me say this before, but if I, if I were to take a poll, right, of of everyone in our congregation, right, and then a poll of everyone in the congregation down the street, you know, and then the churches that are over in Atlanta and over in Athens, and I, and I were to take a poll to every church person, even in our region, I would say, now, what should we be doing, right, in order to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, right, to share the love of Jesus Christ, to be the church, what, what does that look like? How many different answers can you imagine that I would receive? And I can tell you, I've been pastor just a few years, but I can tell you I would get many, many, many different answers, <laughs> right? And some would say, oh, we need to do mission trips or, or we need to volunteer at the local hospital or the local um, nursing home or volunteer at the local prison, right? Or we need to support the teachers. We need a, a food pantry. We need, you know, to reach kids, right? Have a VBS and maybe have a youth trip, right? Or we need ministry for young families and young adults and on and on and on and on, right? And these are all 
wonderful ministries, right? And very necessary. Our communities need these things. But we know that no one person, and I'll say no one congregation, can do them all. Right? No one person or congregation is equipped to do all of these things. It takes all of us. It takes all of us working faithfully in our gifting, in the places where God has called us to serve. Right? I can't just go and serve where God's called you to serve. I have to be listening to the Holy Spirit and our congregation listening to the Holy Spirit and discerning, okay, Lord Jesus, where are you calling us to serve? Where are you equipping us to serve? And it may not look like the church down the street. It probably won't, right? And it may not look like what we did 10 years ago, right? But we trust that the Holy Spirit is leading us in accordance with his guidance today, right? And this means that we must, as the church, lay down our own desires, our own ambitions, right? Because this is not about us. <laughs> this is about Him. He is Lord. Right? Whenever we, whatever we do, right, as the church, we remember that He is the standard, like He's the plumb line, right, which we should be checking again and again and again, right, asking that question, like, are we still moving and serving using our gifts in accordance with the direction of the Holy Spirit, this plumb line, today? Are we still surrendering to Him as Lord, even in the ways that we are serving today, right? Or are we operating in our own wisdom, in our own desires, in our own purposes, right? See, these are, this is a very different standard than, well, this is just what we've always done, right? See, when we rely on our own experience or our own desires, you know, about things that happened before, and we try to discern how we should be serving in the church with our own experience and desires, the risk here is that this may make us into a community that's no longer making disciples, right? But we may become a community that's just making consumers, right? No longer a community where folks are coming to know Jesus Christ, to give their lives to Him, deepening in their faith in Him, growing in their character and their witness, right? But we run the risk of becoming a church where folks are coming just to try to stay comfortable, right? But following Jesus Christ, we know is not comfortable, not in this world. We remember Jesus' words. Well, we read last week from John. He said, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. The wind blows wherever it pleases, he said. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. He said, so it is with everyone born of the spirit, right? As the church, we're supposed to keep moving with the spirit. As we are prayerfully discerning, like our call to be the church and what this looks like to share the love of Jesus Christ with our neighbors in this time, the question is, what is our motive today? Right? Who, are we just moving in a way that feels like familiar and, and comfortable? Or are we surrendering again to Jesus Christ as Lord? All right, checking in with that plumb line. Surrendering again to the guidance and the movement of the Holy Spirit, what He is doing in our lives and our communities today. Uh, so you know that uh, in January of last year, our congregation adopted a new leadership model. Um, it's called the Simplified Accountable Structure. We're going to be talking uh, a good bit about that structure in the next weeks and months, uh, just to kind of learn that structure. Essentially, the Simplified Accountable Structure, we've heard it called a lot of times the one board model because it's coming from the traditional model in the United Methodist Church where we had four committees, right? We had finance, trustees, staff, parish relations, and, and council. And those four committees have come together into one committee, which we have as our leadership board. Um, so it's simplified. But when we do that, we really lose a lot of the accountability that was in the old model. 
the traditional model, right? Because there were so many folks who were involved in making decisions. Um, these folks over here in this committee had to check in with these folks over here in this committee, right? And so they kind of held each other accountable. Um, but now, you know, this is all one group. All right, and so um, best practices is they've kind of watched this thing and watched churches move into this structure over the last 10 and 15 years. They've learned that you have to put in other ways to hold the church and the leadership accountable, right? Because you're losing some of these things when you come into this simplified accountable structure. Um, but what they've seen is not only do these places of accountability and not only do they better enable the church to go out and do ministry, right, but they also allow our leadership board to kind of come out of um, what sometimes we call the weeds, right, the weeds of church management and the weeds of church ministry, right, they, they can kind of come out of that and they're able to kind of like go up to the balcony, right, you can kind of imagine going up to the balcony and looking out over the garden and taking a higher view of things, right, and one of the benefits of this for the church and for the board is that the leadership board, they can begin to focus again on this central question of the church, which is how well are we walking out our mission, right, how well are we walking out our call to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ, right? To see transformation in our community as people come to know and follow Jesus Christ, right? Traditionally, leadership committees in the traditional model, they'd gotten very often to a place where they were almost never able to actually ask that question. They were so busy engaged in the day-to-day -day, like details of managing the church and, and taking care of the church that they were never able to take a step back and to ask the question, how well are we actually doing on the mission, right? And so um, the question I think, you know, what does this have to do? You may be wondering uh, with our discussion this morning and our passage this morning on, on our gifts and our service in the church. Well. While we have adopted the simplified accountable structure at Bogart United Methodist Church, there are still a number of elements in that structure that we still need to develop in our church. Um, and so I wanna quickly describe two of those things to you. And I think these things directly impact um, our congregation. They'll directly impact, um, especially as we are discerning you know, what are the giftings in this church? How are we being called to go out and to serve and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in our community at Bogart United Methodist Church? And one of the, um, the elements, I want to introduce again a couple of those just briefly to you this morning. Uh, the first element um, is that this structure, the Simplified Accountable Structure, it calls for a renewed focus by the board on both the mission of the church, go out and make disciples, and also the vision of the church. All right, now the vision, um, this is really a little bit more specific than the global mission. All right, vision um, is really those specific ways that we as a congregation at Bogart United Methodist Church feel that the Holy Spirit is leading our church to walk in our gifts and to serve this community for the sake of sharing the gospel. Right? This is where our congregation, it, we take time to kind of look at all of the places of need that are all around us, physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, all of the places where we might um, be able to jump in and minister. And then we ask that question, we pray, and we say, in the midst of all of this need, all of this need that we see all around us, where is the Holy Spirit leading Bogart United Methodist Church to go and to serve? Where is the Holy Spirit equipping this congregation to go and serve, right? And as we said before, that may not be in the same places and in the same ways that other congregations are doing. And it may not even be in the same places and same ways that we were called to serve 10, 5 years ago, right? But we have to get in line with the Holy Spirit and begin to discern what is the thing he's calling us to do now in this season right and ultimately the board is responsible for really making the final discernment about the vision of bogart united methodist church in this season 
and they are also called to regularly come together as the board to take a step back together and to take that higher level view and to ask that question, okay, how well are we doing with our mission and how well are we doing with the vision that God has given Bogart United Methodist Church, right? This is accountability, right? This puts some accountability not only back on the leadership board, but it puts it back on the whole congregation. Are we walking in our mission? Are we surrendering in our gifts and our service? Are we surrendering to Jesus Christ as Lord? All right, now normally this process of discernment, um, it usually takes months, right? Congregations usually take a long time. A, a part of this uh, process involves really hearing from everyone. Um, we really want to be able to hear from everyone and, and can just kind of check back in with the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and it really depends on everyone's discernment and prayer. Um, and, and we know that, again, ultimately the board will make the final discernment. But in the next few months, uh, our plan, and I say our plan, we know that plans uh, can get interrupted. Uh, but the plan is to provide different opportunities in the church. Um, likely these will be in like small group formats, coffees and opportunities after church services where different folks in the congregation, different folks in our community will be invited to come, um, to pray together and to discuss this question. Let's remember our vision. I mean, excuse me, let's remember our mission, the mission to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's consider the needs that we see in our community and then let's talk a little bit, where are the places that we see the Holy Spirit calling our church to engage, to serve in this season, right? Um, and as we're holding these different kind of opportunities, making plans to have these different meetings in the next weeks and months, I, I do ask you all to be praying, right? Praying for the board, praying for our leadership, for the staff, um, and for all of our congregation and for the community that we're called to serve, that we will discern humbly, again, not what we want to do, not our own agenda, but what God is leading us to do, the Holy Spirit, right? So that's the first piece I, I want to introduce to you this morning, um, is that piece of, of really focusing again on the vision that God is giving this congregation in this season. The second piece that I want to introduce to you all today that's a part of the simplified accountable structure um, which we have adopted is what we call ministry teams all right now so the board um starts with the vision we get the vision we discern together the vision as we're discerning the vision the board is also discerning okay in order to fulfill this this vision that the holy spirit has given us what are the ministry teams that we need to develop at bogart united methodist church in order to walk out that vision all right um, and then along with ministry teams, um, for each team, um, working with the pastor, we also identify for each team, the team ministry chair, right? All right, now here, here's the key, that the chair of the ministry team cannot also serve on the board, right? You see this accountability put in place right there, right? Those who are, are um, called um, and selected to go and to serve as chair of these ministry teams that are established, they are not um, the same folks who are sitting on the board, right? But these are folks who are being released from committee meetings. And in fact, they're not even required to come to committee meetings. And in fact, they're encouraged not to come unless they're, we're talking about a specific thing related to that, that particular ministry team because they're released from committees. That's intentional so that they can go out and start giving their time doing ministry. Right? Doing um, and equipping um, folks and sharing the gospel and serving and, and doing missions and doing teaching and children's ministry and all the things that we, we are uh, um, you know, feeling that the Lord is calling us to do in this time. Right? Right? And so you see, you see this um, empowerment happen. The second piece is once those leaders of those ministry teams are identified, the board then tells that leader, okay, here's the budget we give you. The board gives them a budget. The board gives them um, resources and the building, the facilities. And the board says, okay, for this time frame, maybe it's um, three months or six months or however many months during this time, 
Here we are, we're equipping you and we're giving you authority. Real authority as the team leader to go and to begin to make decisions, to make plans for the church to engage in this area of ministry in accordance with the vision. And you don't have to come back to the board for permission again, right? We are giving you the resources to go and to do. And we are empowering you not only with resources, but with real authority to go and to do the ministry, right? And so this takes some of that, that um, ministry, the daily operational responsibilities away from the board. It gives them to folks in the congregation, right? It empowers folks in the congregation to come out of ministry meetings, to go and to do the work of ministry and making disciples, right? And also frees up the board so that they can come out of the weeds of ministry and they can begin to turn their focus back to the mission and the vision. Are we still walking in the mission, the vision that God has given this to this congregation in this time? Right. All right. So these are these are two ideas that, you know, and there, there are a number of other ideas with this simplified accountable structure um, that I, I will be introducing and will be discussing in the coming weeks and months. But I wanted to introduce those two to you all this morning. And of course, these two ideas, but they have other pieces. What I don't have time, you know, to go into this morning, but I, I just, I want you to, um, to begin to be praying, right? As we're walking in this season, as we're continuing to transition into this simplified accountable structure, right? To, to see this, how it's working to help equip us and to help us to engage, right? In our giftings and in our service, to the fulfillment of the mission of Jesus Christ. Right, there is so much going on in our community. There's been so much trial. There has been so much change, right? And we know that. And I, we know that times of change and transition um, are hard and are uncomfortable, right? As we look around, like we can see so much happening. And, and we know that when God is moving, when he's leading us into new things, we know that that can be uncomfortable and even sometimes a bit scary. We also know that when we move into the next new thing that God is doing, even the good things that come, right? We also know that that means that something else is going away. Right? This, this thing that we used to do, this thing that used to be a part of our lives, is going away. And so we know this is also a time of a lot of grief. This is a lot of change and a lot of transition happening in this season. And the Lord our God is doing a lot of things right now. And that can feel very uncomfortable, you know. But so I, I appreciate so much you all continuing to faithfully pray support this congregation and to support all the congregations and communities that are, are that are around us in this area um, and we give thanks right to give thanks even in this time to our king to our lord this morning right as he continues in his grace to provide us the courage and the strength right to continue to move forward into the next new thing that he's doing right to turn again to him to check that plumb line again right to surrender again to pray again father god even in the midst of these difficulties even in the midst of these trials holy father not my will be done right but yours i appreciate so much um connecting with you all this morning this week i look forward um, with hope and, and belief that next Sunday we will be gathering again in person at the church um, and offering the live stream for those who will be continuing to worship at home. Thank you so much for your connection, for your prayers, for your trust, your faith in Jesus Christ, for the witness of who you are. And let us just go together, continuing to surrender to him, trusting in what he is doing and the good, the good work of transformation in, in, um, that he's doing in our lives, in our families, in our community. To the glory of his name. Have a great week. Blessings today.